and talking about silver linings, I'm getting a bit of a silver lining myself, as uh, Jenny pointed out last week about the whole big 4-0. But if you are thinking about investing in property, um, particularly as you move on in years like myself, what are the pitfalls that you need to avoid and where are the good places to invest in? Well, Jenny caught up with Nicholas Woolwork to find out a lot more. The UK property market is considered a gold mine for many people, but its future is uncertain for the buy-to-let market, yet there's still huge potential for developers. Joining me now is Nicholas Woolwork, property entrepreneur and also owner of PropertyForum.com. Well, Nicholas, it's great to have you in the studio. Thank you for having me. Now, the property market has been on fire for many years now, in fact, as long as I can actually remember. So do you find it's quite difficult to find properties to invest in, considering the huge demand that's out there? Yes, I think it's definitely got a lot harder since the credit crunch. Property markets come back um, very strongly in recent years, and that ultimately means there's a lot more competition for each property that you're going for. Um, and you've got to be um, extra diligent and extra um, hard working I guess to make sure that you're the one that gets the, the best deals out there. Mm. I'd say it's, it's important to focus then on your sourcing strategy, um, mm. make good relationships with sort of local agents and property professionals um, and just work harder and um, smarter than the next person mm. and, and you should still uh, do well and find the right deals. So it's about building relationships, but it's also about spotting the hot spots in the up and coming areas. So looking towards London, are we still looking towards the crossrail areas for the best places to invest? Yes, yeah, certainly. I think um, we need to sort of work back there and to that question and say that the best place to start is with your strategy. Mm. Um, so I don't particularly like to focus on a sort of a, a perceived hot spot. I like to figure out what my strategy is um, and what target market I'm looking to attract. Um, from a tenant perspective, what my product is, um, and then I'll source the relevant property um, in the right area for that particular strategy. So London's a great area. Um, obviously, central London is a, almost a, a market in itself. So that's yeah. quite a tricky market to enter. Uh, the yields are a lot lower, property prices being a lot higher, obviously. Um, we lo like to invest in sort of fringe towns, so south southeast regions, um, sort of Thames Valley, that kind of area, um, where prices are a little bit lower, but you've still got a, a booming market Lots of, um, for our market, lots of young professionals um, that we target um, and we find the products um, that are slightly uh, in, in the better fringe areas rather than in the most expensive areas, which isn't necessarily the rest, best thing to do for property investment strategy. It's said that when you're investing in property, you do have to compromise on certain things. So would you say it's more important to look towards the area you're investing in or the actual property? I would say both equally important. Um, and again, uh, looking at the strategy first, uh, you could have an, an amazing property, but if it's in the wrong location for your strategy, um, it's going to be pretty useless. So you know, an example of that would be if you're looking to invest in the student market, you might want a student HMO model, a sort of seven, eight bedroom property. Um, if that property is out in the countryside, it's going to be no use. So um, it's sort of stating the obvious, really, but uh, it's very much the property, um, uh, you know, as much as the area uh, specific to your chosen strategy. So would you say it's getting easier or actually harder to find finance to buy that property and invest in it? Um, good, it's a good question. I'm, I'm finding it easier um, because I've, um, I've got a little bit more experience now. I've been learning for some time as to how to finance deals. Um, I think the, the newer investors um, you know, need to educate themselves as to how to finance property and finance is a massive part of property investment mm. actually, it's, it's probably the main part. Um, and once you've learnt about all the different options, you know, everything from buy to let mortgages, bridge loans, um, you can be as creative as, as creative as JV financing, working with um, investors that have money that don't want to do the, the legwork. Once you've learnt all of those different financing strategies, um, you're a much better place to put a deal together and when you do find the right property and the right vendor, potentially, um, you, you know, you're in a position to take advantage of that. So I think um, it doesn't have to be getting harder. Um, I think it was very hard to finance property after the credit crunch with the banks, clearly. Um, that's coming back now and I think it's at a reasonably sensible level of lending at, at the moment. So investors still need um, a, a reasonable size deposit to buy property. Um, unless you look at the creative strategies I mentioned a moment ago, such as JV money, where you can work with a, an investor with money if you're prepared to do the legwork and the, and the development work yourself. Mm, absolutely. So finally, if people are wanting to invest in property, how much value do you put on education and mentorship, that sort of thing? 
I put a huge value on that. I think it, it all stems from that. Um, I don't think anyone should be going out there looking at specific properties straight away, certainly with a, a you know, wedge of cash in their back pocket if they've got to pay out um, for whatever reason. Um, the last thing they should do is start shopping for properties. I think they should shop for good education, educate themselves online, um, go to networking meetings, speak to like-minded investors and, and open up communication channels and, um, and learn from other people, read all the books you can. I've read every property book going from everyone in property, uh, it doesn't matter how big or small they are, uh, in the hope that every book that I read there'll be one useful nugget of information uh, or, or multiple um, and as you get your experience that filters down um, to the rest of the business really. Nicholas, thank you. Fascinating. No problem, thank you. So some really in interesting points there from Nicholas. Basically, if you haven't already, get online, read as much as possible and do your research and your background info before committing to any investment.